Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the video interview of Eyes of Focus. I'm Nuria Gonzalez Prezik, a professor at the AC department in North Carolina State University. This video interview is part of the multimedia newsletter promoted by the Integrated Sensing and Communication Emerging Technology Initiative. And I am really excited about being here with you, being part of the ISAC research community and sharing with you all these discussions about latest results and challenges in this research area. The first issue of the electronic newsletter and the interview will focus on the application of ISAC technologies to vehicular networks. Uh, we have here with us today to discuss this topic our first invited as researcher, Dr. Christos Masoros, professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, University College London. He has a track record of publications in human radar and communications with many contributions to the area of vehicular networks. He is also a member of the CONSOC ISAC Emerging Technology Initiative, so I thought he could be the perfect uh, researcher for this first interview. Christos, uh, nice having you here today. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation again. Um, before proceeding with more technical questions and given your role in the ISAC CONSOC initiative, I would like you to give us a summary of the activities that you're planning for the next months besides this multimedia newsletter. First of all, thanks, uh, Nuria, for inviting me uh, to this. Um, so this uh, emerging technology initiative on ISAC, so Integrated Sensing and Communications. Um, so we've started this effort. I'm, I'm a, a vice chair, and it's chaired by uh, Dr. Fan Liu. Uh, and we started this to, to kind of try to organize the researchers a little bit in, in the area uh, under the umbrella of uh, IEEE. Uh, in, in the area of um, uh, joint radar and communications. So uh, building together some uh, of the latest, the best reading, some of the latest research that's been happening, but also organizing uh, training events, webinars, uh, tutorials, uh, also organizing special issues, special sessions. So trying to bring, you know, the community, it's emerging research area. And we've observed that it's, it's you know, there's a lot going on uh, recently. And it's going to grow is our prediction. So we wanted to bring together, you know, all these research efforts uh, and to organize ourselves a little bit and have, let's say, a community that we can establish. Uh, maybe in the future, we'll, we, we might uh, introduce some uh, dedicated symposia on ISAC, so Integrated Sensing and Communications in, uh, in flagship conferences. Uh, or, uh, or uh, you know, another aim is to uh, try to engage with the radar community that have similar initiatives with the signal processing society that have similar initiatives. So to build a, a wide, you know, worldwide vast network uh, on this. So maybe we can move now to a more technical uh, perspective. Uh, I would like to start talking about uh, deep learning. This technology is now being extensively applied to many problems in wireless networks from CSI acquisition to network parameter optimization. Even though there are some words that apply deep learning to the design of joint radar com systems, it seems there is a lot of space for new contributions. And I wonder what's your perspective on the role that data-driven approaches could play in joint radar com? What are the challenges that still remain and can be better solved with deep learning? That's, that's a very uh, good topic and a, a very wide area. Uh, I mean, already in the communications only literature, it's a very wide area. People are applying deep yeah. learning to detection problems, you know, channel estimation problems, transmission problems, resource allocation problems. And now once you have a system that does two things, communications and sensing, uh, you know, it's, an, it's another wide range of problems that you have and many uh, topics where you can apply uh, deep learning approaches. So on the detection side, for example, you're no longer detecting uh, data. Uh, uh, where there's already a lot of uh, deep learning, uh, you know, literature going on, but you also have, you know, target echoes and tracking targets and recognizing classifying targets. So there's many open new problems that you can apply deep learning techniques. Often these are, um, you know, not easily to track mathematically. So that's another, uh, you know, uh, motivation to apply deep learning. Uh, and on the transmitter side, uh, my own my own uh, group has done some work on uh, joint waveform design, so a waveform that's good for both communicating information and uh, detecting targets. Again, uh, once you you start using, let's say, uh, complicated bottom line radar metrics, 
like the Kramer Rao bound or other communication metrics, you know, again, things can become quite complicated. And that's, that's another area we can apply deep learning. And we started looking at, uh, at this. Now, if we, if we want to talk about vehicular communications, which I guess is more of a, of a focus of, of uh, you know, yeah. our discussion. Yeah. Um, one nice, um, you know, application I, I see for, first of all, for uh, this joint radar communications is um, you, can, you can use the sensing functionality to actually assist the communications uh, functionality. Yes. Uh, and this is by removing the need for CSI and the overheads for CSI. So where instead, uh, you know, where before you had the communication only uh, uh, link, where you had to add feedback from the vehicle to the roadside unit, let's say, for establishing the link, for detecting the CSI, or for BIM index, uh, you know, uh, 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 selection. Uh, the sensing capability actually circumvents a lot of that because once you sense the the angle of arrival, let's say, from the vehicle, you have a good estimate of where you want to point your beam. So already the sensing capability, you know, saves a lot of um, overheads in there, uh, and this has been shown already. Uh, our own work has shown some, some of that. Uh, other people are also working on this. It's been shown that you can, uh, you know, you can exploit this sensing uh, functionality in simple, relatively simple scenarios, maybe one vehicle in a linear tra trajectory. And things there are, are relatively you know, straightforward. The, the math is not that complicated. But once you have, let's say, nonlinear trajectories or many vehicles, you know, things again, become quickly uh, quite complicated. The math, you know, it becomes too difficult to track. And then there's, th that's another problem specific to vehicle communications where you uh, can apply deep learning. Uh, and and there's, as, there's another issue that rises um, in these situations. Once you don't have this feedback and you don't have, you know, the exchange of IDs between the vehicle and the roadside unit, another challenge is to associate each beam with a different vehicle. So beam association or data association. So which beam is pointing to which vehicle and what data I'm gonna to transmit to which vehicle. Uh, and that's another you know, classical machine learning you know, uh, problem uh, that, that uh, it's interesting to look at. So many yeah, open yeah, problems, it's yeah. a wide open area. If you, know, if you think a lot of problems in the communications only area, there's as much or maybe more problems in the joint radar communications area where you can apply yeah. these deep learning approaches. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, you can get really interesting results in my group. We are also working on that uh, idea of a radar assisted communication and we have applied deep learning too. And what I like is that it works very well also in no line of sight situations. It can work very mm -hmm. well there too. Absolutely. And multi-user environments. So where environments uh, which are complicated from a propagation perspective and difficult to model mm -hmm. mathematically, you, you really find a interesting results. So exactly. Yeah. And this is just starting. So yeah. I think many it's open very, problems. Yeah. Looking forward to, to seeing uh, your work in this. Okay, let's move now to another issue that I think uh, it is especially relevant uh, in vehicular networks. I'm talking about security. Yesterday, I read your paper, uh, very recent, available in archive. Um, on how to design uh, the joint radar and communication waveform uh, introducing security considerations. I wonder if you could give us a summary of the state of the art uh, on this topic and what are the challenges that need to be addressed? Yeah, I think this is a particular challenge for joint radar communications, and it has some uniqueness, um, uh, you know, in this topic, because uh, once you think, once you have, let's say, a signal that, uh, is good for it's the, the radar probing signal that is good for detecting a target that also carries information. It means that now the radar signal is prone to eavesdropping from potential uh, targets. And if that target is, let's say, malicious or non cooperative, you want to make sure that the, the data you want to communicate with the communication users is not being eavesdropped from the radar target. And that has some nice trade offs where on one hand side, you want to, to, to beam power towards the target, you know, to, to detect you know, the target parameters. So you have to beam power towards that target, but at the same time, towards the same direction, you want to limit the, the useful signal power that's being received to limit the capability of the target for eavesdropping, if that makes sense. While at the same time, you want to, of course, guarantee the quality of service of the communication users. 
So this secrecy constraint and the, the radar SNR constraint that happen at the same direction, there are two conflicting, conflicting um, you know, kind of objectives. And they are quite interesting to, to see analytically and how to, to, to uh, tackle these uh, in practice. So I see this as uh, you know, one of the major uh, challenges that needs to be addressed before you know, we can apply uh, this dual functional uh, transmission. Uh, because if, if, you know, if uh, this joint uh, radar communication is not secure, uh, you know, it won't be adopted, uh, you know, uh, very quickly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And there are so, so few papers on this topic that is completely open. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, a good There's opportunity. There's a few opportunities as well there, mm -hmm. uh, as well. So, you know, the, the sensing capability on its own is mm -hmm. kind of an enabler for physical air security. So if, if you've mm -hmm. been following this physical yeah. air security literature, a lot of uh, the works there assume some sort of knowledge yeah. of the eavesdropper. Right, which is you know not very practical, I guess, uh, in many scenarios. But this sensing capability can give you some information from you know angles of potential eavesdroppers and so on, and and that will then that uh, you know can inform you or where how to do secure beam bombing towards which directions. So you know the sensing capability is also a, you know an opportunity here to to assist secure communications. So again, many uh, nice open problems in this area. Okay, uh, I wish we had more time for a longer discussion, but it's time to end the interview. Thank you again for sharing your thought and your perspective about this exciting area of research. I really hope many more researchers find our ISAC newsletter and this interview interesting and can contribute to, to this area with new amazing works. And see you all in our next interview. Uh, where we will focus on ISAC for cellular networks, and I will interview Professor Mikawa Kama at Tampere University. See you then.